Okay. So, fundamental counting principle, permutations and combinations. Today is about how to count. We're going to learn how to count things. Okay. Now, so the first one is factorial. Factorial represented by an exclamation mark means multiplication. N factorial means N times N minus 1 times N minus 2, blah, 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 all the way down to 1. So, for example, 5 factorial does not mean I say 5. The exclamation mark does not mean I use emphasis and enthusiasm when saying it. 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That is what 5 factorial is. Okay? That's what a factorial is. It's that number times 1 less times 1 less times 1 less. Now, factorials are only for positive integers except for 0. By definition, 0 factorial is 1. And there's a reason you have to do that, and we will see that reason later today. Okay, but there's a reason we have to have that definition. Because I can't do count down to get to 1 starting at 0, right? But we do have to say that if you type in 0 factorial on your calculator, it will tell you it's 1. Okay, fundamental counting principle, a -A a.k.a. the Chinese menu theorem. You go to a Chinese restaurant for lunchtime, typically it'll be what you get one from this column and one from this column and one from this column. The question is, how many times can I eat there without getting the same meal twice? Well, it's the number of items in column one times the number of items in column two times the number of items in column three. You multiply those together, that's how many different things you can order there. That's the Chinese menu theorem. That's what this is. The number of ways the first thing we want times the number of ways the second thing we want, and so on and so on and so on. It's how you count things. How many ways can I do it? That's what this is about today. A permutation is how many ways you can arrange items in a particular order. Permutation order matters. Order matters. The order in which they appear makes a difference. That's what a permutation is. So if I'm pulling out letters out of a bag and I have this, I have the letter C A T. Well, I can spell cat. I can spell act. I can spell tack. Order matters. The order of the letters matter. Okay, that's a permutation. Something the order matters. Combination, same idea, only order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I think the easiest explanation is for a permutation. I have a drawing. And I'm going to pull names out of a hat. First place gets 20 bucks. Second place gets 10 bucks. Third place gets 5 bucks. And the first person I pull out is the winner, right? It matters the order in which I pull those three names out of that bag. Because it's a different prize. I'm giving away three gift cards, each worth 20 bucks. Does it matter which name comes out first? No. It matters that you're one of the three. Order doesn't matter on that. You have a club. You're going to elect the president, the vice president, and the treasurer. How you choose those three names makes a difference because each one of those jobs is different. That same club decides to form a committee for their parade float. Three people on the committee. doesn't matter which order, the, which order the names are picked because they're on a committee together. They all have the same responsibilities and, and powers. Order doesn't matter. Difference between the two. Factorials, this is probably the most common use of factorials, is, is this, but they are used in all kinds of counting. There is a very subtle but extremely important difference between these two. Notice they are exactly the same, except in the combination, you have R factorial. This eliminates the repeated ones that you would get in a permutation. Okay. Questions? Okay, and like I said, you are going to need your calculators for everything we do and for the things we do in here. You want to do this on your calculator. First few problems, okay, I do want you to write them out by hand. So, 
If I look at 6 factorial, what does 6 factorial mean? 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Like I said, when I was your age, I had to do these by hand. This side. Although I didn't mind it too much being the math geek that I am. I've always, always been a math geek. So, On your calculator. Please, get out your calculator. Hit the PRB cut button. If you hit the PRB button on your calculator, on your screen, PRB. Those three things will line up with the first one being underlined. Permutation combination factorial. Use the arrow button to move back and forth which one is underlined. It tells you which one you want to use. Okay, so if you want to do 6 factorial on your calculator, you type in 6, hit the PRB button, PRB for probability, the factorial key, and then equals, and that'll put, the, put 6 factorial on your stack, and then you have to hit equals again, it will give you the answer, and in this case the answer is 720. <laughs> Yes. Six. Um, six. 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 Um, six. Yours should have one too. Here. Let me pause this for a second. Hang on. Okay. Shh. Guys, settle down. So the next one, eight factorial over three factorial is eight times 7, times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1, over 3, times 2, times 1. Now, when I was your age, this is what I would do. And what I would do here, 3 times 2 times 1, cancel them out. And then just multiply that part. So if you're doing it by hand, that's what you really want to do. Because 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 is not as nearly as difficult as, and then adding 6 and then dividing by it. Simplify it first. And do that on your calculator. And you can type in on your calculator. 8 factorial divided by 3 factorial equals, and get the answer. Okay. Right, but if, okay, so, shh, quiet please. So, if I look at this last one here, 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. And once again, if I were doing this by hand, that all cancels out. Six times five times, because I got the same thing on the top and bottom that way. Those all get disappear. Three times two times one, that's six. Six goes into 12 twice. I have to multiply that together. Now, if you're doing this on your calculator, Anything that's in the numerator is multiplied. Anything that's in the denominator is divided. So do 12 factorial divided by 6 factorial divided by 3 factorial. And you do that. <coughs> 12 factorial 
divided by 6 factorial, divided by 3 factorial. Because anything in the bottom is division, anything in the top is multiplication. You pick one of the ones on the top, start with that, then multiply by anything that's on the top of it, divide by anything that's in the bottom. No, you no 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 no. You have to do the factorials. You could do that too. Yeah. Right. Okay. So these numbers can get very large, very fast. If you do twelve factorial by itself, your calculators can't handle it too well. It'll actually give a number that's with scientific notation on it. And there's actually one of the problems we do where it actually will not do the problem because it does not have enough memory space to do the problem. Wait, so why would you, if they were like both on the denominator, why would you? Okay. Sure, you can multiply them together, put parentheses around them before you do. Or they, they take the prize, so they give you the small time. Okay, quiet. And then divided by 12. So, like, first I got 2,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,9,
Okay. So, guys, let's focus. I know. It's a beautiful day. I don't care. So, first one, four five times three times two times one is 24. Second one, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, over 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 33,024. Last one, 7, 5, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1, 10,080. And then the last three, you didn't have to write them out. Just figure them out. You got 30, 55,440, and 33,600. Questions? Okay. Permutations and combinations. Permutation of five things chosen three at a time. That's what that means. Five things chosen three at a time. I have a bag with five Scrabble tiles. How many ways can I reach in one at a time and pull out three tiles laying them down? Order matters. So I'm pulling them out individually and laying them down in the order I pulled them out. So if I pull out the letters A, C, and T, if I pull them out right, they'll spell act. If I pull them out in a different order, I get cat. If I pull them out in a different order, I get cat. Okay, or something like that. Order matters. That's a permutation. Order makes a difference. Oh, wow. So permutation formula. Five factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial. And no, I do not want you to write out the factorial over the factorial and simplify it. But you do need to write it out in the formula. And then on your calculator, you have the NPR button and the NCR button to do the permutation. 5 PRB N B R three equals Yes, N B R. It's not just one of my favorite radio shows. Then you get what do you get? You get sixty. You get 60. There are 60 ways that I can reach in and pull out three letters, laying them down in a particular order, if I have five of them in a bag. Order does matter. 60 different ways I can do that. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Ten items taken seven at a time. 10 factorial over 10 minus 7 factorial. And you worked it out. And there are 604,800 different ways I can reach into a bag of 10 items, pulling them out one at a time and laying them in the order they come out. Or order makes a difference. Once again, let's say I've got 10 different letters in the bag. How I lay them out, if it's different, that's the, or that's the many ways I can do it. That's a lot. It adds up in a hurry. It's the last one. I have four Scrabble tiles in the bag. How many ways can I reach in and, and pull them out one at a time, laying them down in order? Four factorial over 4 minus 4 factorial. What is 4 minus 4? Zero. So that's zero factorial, which I said earlier was 1. If they are the same, it's just the first one factorial on this case, in which case that is, what was that, 24. Basically, there are 24 different ways I can arrange four different things. <laughs> Combination. I have a bag. Instead of reaching in, pulling them out one at a time, I reach in and grab three, and what do I have in my hand? 
That's the difference. Instead of pulling them out one at a time and laying them down in the order they come out, I reach in and grab three and dump it out on the table. Order doesn't matter. That's what a combination is. It's nearly identical, five factorial, over three factorial times five minus three factorial. And you do it the same way on the calculator. You do the combination, permutation, you just do it as a combination. And there are 10 ways that I can do that. Okay, notice, if you please, the difference between the two formulas. The difference between the two formulas is important. This three factorial in the denominator here gets rid of the repeated ones in the permutation. So ACT is the same as CAT because order doesn't matter with the combination. This extra factorial in front removes the repeated ones that come out with the same three letters just in different orders. That's what that does. That's why it's an important difference. Okay. Nine factorial over four factorial, nine minus four factorial. And you get 126. And the last one, you have five items in the bag. I reach in and I pull out five items. How many ways can I reach in and pull out five items by doing all five at the same time? One. And if you work it out, five factorial over five factorial times five minus one, five, five minus five factorial, and you get one. And it makes sense. If order doesn't matter, I'm just reaching in and grabbing. How many ways can I reach in and grab all of them? Now, you'll notice the number in the front is always bigger or the same size as the number in the back. In the back. If I have a bag with five items, how many times can I reach in and grab seven? You can't do it. You can't do it. It has to be the same number or smaller or it won't work. Okay? But on test time, I've had kids screw up. Punch them in backwards. Okay. Do those. Figure them out. Shh. We are recording now, so we stopped that last conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these are your answers. And yeah, you do. I did want you to write them out because you will need to know these formulas for your test. Okay. Writing them out is one way of helping you memorize them. Are they not going to be on the board? No, they're not going to be on the board. Um, so. Notice what I put down for the third one over there. Really, really, really big. Okay, your calculator soon said it was like two point blah 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 to the ten to the twenty six. It did scientific notation, that's what it is, twenty six power. That means a two followed by twenty six zeros. Yes, it is a very large number. Okay. Um, there is actually one of the problems on your on what we're doing here that your calculator will not do. It actually says the memory is not big enough. Okay, now how to count things. So different ways of counting things. This first sec section is more of the fundamental counting principle, and it's how many different ways. I can I can count things. So the first one is California license plates for a new car. Now, there are some things that we need to focus on in order to give ourselves parameters. First off, on a on a license plate for a car, you have six or seven letters and or numbers. Okay, we're going to go with seven. So when you're looking at this. And there are also other restrictions. I looked it up just because I was kind of curious if there were any restrictions. The restrictions I, O, and Q are not in the first or third position. They can be anywhere else, but not the first or third position in a license plate. So your license plate will not start with an I or an O or a Q. 
Because that's the rules they have. So it's no, really, that's the rules they have. Wait, so if you see, so if a police now, if you have a personalized license plate, it could be different. But on the but on one like if you don't personalize your license plate, you get one just mailed to you when you buy your new car. I, O, and Q will not be the first letter because that's what the rules they have. I think part of it is, is I I know the I and the O look a lot like one and zero, and the Q also looks a lot like a zero. And so on the first glance, you they know that it starts. If you, they see one of those in the front, it's either a one or a zero in the front. I don't know, I don't know. but after that. I don't know why it's not eliminated all the way across, but it's just eliminated only for the first spot and the third spot, which is weird. Okay, so, ladies. Okay. So, how many letters and number choices do I have for the first position? I've got seven places to fill. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. On my license plate, I've got seven spots to fill. How many choices do I have for that first spot? How many letters are in the alphabet? 26. 26. How many digits are there to choose from? Nine. 10. You got to include the zero. There's 10. So that gives me 36 choices. Or actually, but not those three there, right? 36 normally, but I take away three of them. 33 choices for my first thing in my license plate A, B, C, D, E, F, D, blah, 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 and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. 33 choices. How many choices do I have for the next one? 36. I've got 36. Because I can have any one of them. Any one of the letters, any one of the digits, I can have 36 possibilities. Okay. How many for the next one? 33. 33, because I'm not allowed to have those three things. How many for the next one? 36. And the next one? 36. The next one? 36. And the last one? 36. So it's how many choices do I have for each spot? I have 10 le 26 letters and 10 digits to choose from. Oh. Right? 36 possibilities. Fundamental counting principle says I multiply all those together. So you multiply all those together and you get 6, 5, 8, 4, 7, Six, eight, five, six, six, zero. That's how many license plates you can come up with. <laughs> yeah, but your calculator should speak. Well, maybe it won't speak this one out. Okay. Mind it. Yeah. Shh. Guys, focus, excuse me, focus. Um, so yes, a very large number of possible license plates. This does not include the ones where you have a blank in the first spot because it's only six digits long. Does not include personalized license plate, which mean which need to be at least two items long and no more than seven, because you can get personalized license plates that only have two letters in them. I looked it up. They have some special symbols you can get now. You can get a heart, and you can get some other things in there too nowadays. You can get the little hand. You can get a little hand. It's just like a hand, like a little hand on your hand. Okay, now, quiet. Remember, all those things cost extra money. And some of it's worth it, some of it's not. Okay. Okay, a five-digit even number. So that means I have five digits. One, two, three, four, five digits. You know, 10,000, 4,952. Okay. How many choices do I have for my first number? The first place here, the first digit I have in front. It's a five-digit number. It's a five-digit number, like 10,000. 12,348, something like that. How many do I have for the first one? Oh, isn't it nine? It's nine. Why is it nine? Because it doesn't have to be an odd number at the beginning. It has to be an even number at the end. Right, but that doesn't tell me why it needs to be nine. There's a reason it is. The reason it's nine and not ten. Because it can't be zero. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What does it say? Five digit even numbers. It's a five digit number. Okay. How many choices for the second one? Ten. Ending. I have ten choices for my second digit. My second digit. That's not the number. Nine is not the number. Okay. Understand what, what's a five digit number? What's a five digit number? It's a number that's got five, it's a number that has five digits in it, right? This is how many choices I have for the first digit, not the number itself. Oh, so um, how many things can be the first number in the first digit in my in my number? Uh, I have nine choices. Oh. It can be a one or two or three or a four or five or six or seven or eight or nine, but not a zero for the first one. Second one, I can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or a zero. And then what do I have here? Ten. And this one? And this one? No. Even. Which means it needs to end in two, four, six, eight, or zero. How many of them are there? Multiply those together. 45,000. Okay. 622 phone numbers. Okay. Because then it would be a four-digit number, not a five-digit number. If you had zero in the front, it would be a four-digit number, not a five-digit number. Oh, okay. Wait. So. Okay. Wait. Okay. So the next one is how many six two two phone numbers? That's six two two area code. So the area code is six two two. How many of the phone numbers can be in the six two two area code? So you have one, two, three, dash, one, two, three, four. How many choices do I have for my first digit in the phone number? Um, nine. Why can't it be zero? Oh, yeah. They can be ten. And how many for the next one? Ten. And the next one? Ten, because the numbers could be repeated. Right? Ten, 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 ten. Now, they're all the same. How many, how many tens do I have? Seven. So this is ten to the seventh, which is a ten. One followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. Oops, I need one more. So there's a possibility of 10 million different phone numbers, which is not, which is not to say 10 billion people are having phones, because many people have more than one phone number, particularly businesses. We'll have several phone numbers per business. Okay. Now, I like this one. Making up a seating chart. Six kids in the front row. Does it make a difference where they are? Yeah, because maybe I don't want Bobby sitting next to Susie. Maybe Susie doesn't want to sit next to Bobby. So order matters. Susie doesn't matter. Okay. Yes, everybody matters. So how many how many kids do I get to choose from to fill that first seat? I got thirty because I got thirty kids in the class. Okay. Now, I got one kid sitting down. How many can I put here? How many can I put here? Okay, do that. 29 times 28 times 27 times 26 times 25. Okay, one kid's gone. I got 29 left to sit down. I got one, two, two kids are gone. I got 28 left to fill the seat and so on. That's what that is. That's a fundamental counting principle. How many choices do I have for my first seat? I've got 30. 
that kid's picked. I can't pick him again. I can't put him in both seats at the same time. I don't care who he is. He can't take up two desks. So I got 29 kids to build a second one, 29 choices for the next seat. So that first row, 30, 30 kids in the class, first row, 427 million. 518,000. Possibilities for the front row alone. Cool. Oh my God. That's kind of hard. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Okay. So, okay. Shh, quiet. Same thing. Go ahead and skip the first one. All of the rules for the first one um, are a little different. The rules for the first one for a truck, if we're talking a commercial vehicle, no I, no O, no Q, anywhere. So it's just going to be on the for a commercial vehicle. It's going to be on the test. Um, you will not need to know those particulars for the test. Thank you very much. No, I would not be that. I would not be that cruel. Okay, so do these three. Do those three. Okay. Here we go. So uh, the first one, six digit odd numbers. Nine choices for the first one because you can't have zero at the beginning because it's not a six digit number. It's a five digit number. And then times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, times 5. If it's odd, it ends in 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. You multiply those together, and you get 450,000. Okay. Uh, 530, area folk. Area code phone number is actually the same thing we did before on the other side. Okay, it's ten times ten times ten, ten to the seventh, or ten million. We did the same thing we did on the other side. Lining up ten people for tickets. Okay, come on, there, come on, there we go. So, how many choices for the first person? Ten, nine choices, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one, blast off. <laughs> and you multiply those together, and you get 3,628,800. Different ways. And this is the same thing as 10 factorial. Yeah. So you got 10 people. How many ways can you arrange 10 people for a photograph? Same thing. You got a family reunion, you got 10 people. How can you arrange the 10 people in the, pho in the photograph? There's 3,628,800 different ways you can have people stand for a post for a picture of 10 if they're lined up in a straight line. Yeah. So there's a lot of possible combinations. This is what a lot of mathematics, or a lot of probability and stuff that you work with, is how to count things. You have to be able to have different ways of counting things. How many ways can something happen? How many ways do I get this? It's counting things. That's all this is, is counting. How many ways can we do something? Okay. These are a little bit different. These are all permutations and combinations. So the first one, I am choosing a president, a vice president, and a secretary, and a treasurer from a club of 25 people. Does order matter yeah. yes so this would be a permutation how many do how many how many am I, blah, 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 blah. how many am i choosing from no, that's how many i'm choosing how many am i choosing from so i have 25 taking four at a time and if i do that there are 300 and 3600 different possibilities of combinations of president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. And that's from 25 people. Wait, it's all right. Yeah, it adds up in a hurry. So you're taking last number. 
No, I'm taking how many people I have to choose from. Yeah. I've got 25. I have 25 in the group. I'm pulling out four. Okay. Right? Four at a time. Choosing committee members of four from a class of 20. Does order matter? No, they all have the same responsibility if you're on the committee. How many am I picking? How many am I choosing from? What's my pool? 20 people. And I'm choosing a combination of four at a time. And it's considerably less. 4,845 different possible committees of three people from three oh, people. So it's a whole lot less because order doesn't matter. How do you tell this here? Does order matter or not? Combination order doesn't matter. It's um, a committee. Does it matter how who I pick first? Right. No, they're all going to have equal power. I just pull four names out of a hat. President, vice president, secretary, and treasurer order matters because they have different roles. Okay. okay. Choose three word of the week winners from 75 entries. So I'm picking three people that won. Three, 75 people entered the contest. I'm picking three winners. Does it matter the order or not? Yeah. No, the implication here is the prizes are all the same. The prizes are all the same. It doesn't matter whose name gets picked first. There's three winners. Each one I got, here's a gift basket, here's a gift basket, here's a gift basket. They're all the same. Does it matter who gets the first one, who gets the last one? No, as long as we get one. Right? 75 people entered the contest. Three are winning a prize that is exactly the same. Doesn't matter who goes first and who goes last, as long as you're one of the three. 67,525 different ways of doing that. Okay. Choose a $100 winner and a $50 winner from a group of 50. Does order matter? Yeah. Yeah, you bet it does. There's a $50 difference between being first and second. Order really matters. So would this be a combination or a permutation? Permutation. Order matters. And da, 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 da. 24 or 50. How many winners? Yeah, a $100 winner and a $50 winner. How many people are winning? Two. Two. It's not a hundred winners. It's not a hundred one dollar winners. It's one hundred dollar winner. Right? So two people are winning. Really? Really? You can't tell the difference between a hundred dollars and a hundred people? I mean, it's. Well, no, that's not. Well, yeah. It's like, I would say that's a hundred dollars. Right. This, she was a hundred dollar and a fifty dollar raffle contest winner. Okay. Shh. Okay. You're playing cards. You're playing cards. How many possible five card hands are there? That's what this question actually is. How many different possible Five card combinations are there in a deck of cards. Does order matter? Yes. Only no, only when you're kind of looking at it as to a placement. It really actually doesn't matter which order you get the cards, does it? If you get three aces, it doesn't matter whether those are the first three cards, the last three cards, or somewhere in between. As long as you get three aces in there, you got three aces, right? When it's hand is dealt, it doesn't matter which order they get dealt to you, does it? All that matters is you get those cards. So order does not matter. Yeah. 52 cards, choosing five at a time. I actually did not complete this one. Do it. See what you get. Uh, it should not be pink. Oh, wait, really? Order does not matter. Oh. Two million what? Uh, is that what you got? That sounds about right. So, 
odds to have this is how many different possible combinations. Now, if you ever play poker, you know that some hands are better than others. Yeah. One pair is two pairs better than one pair. Why? Because there are fewer combinations that give you two pair over one pair. That's why. It's how many possibility possible of that particular type of hand, and the rarity of that within those possibilities determines it. So this is part of probability. What's the probability of you dealing five cards of you getting a royal flush? Well, there are four possible royal flushes. There's one for spades, one for hearts, one for diamonds, one for clubs. So there's four possibilities. The possibility of you being a dealt a royal flush in just the dealing of the hands is four divided by that. Yeah, that's why a royal flush is the hardest one to get. Do those. You have to decide whether it's a combination or a permutation. Let's finish this up. Okay, so the first one. Does order matter? No, so it's a combination. 25, choosing six at a time. And you get 177,100. Choose $50 card. Four, four what, fifty dollar gift card for winners. For me, that is poorly worded question. How many winners do we have? Four. four. Does it matter if you're first or last? No. So it's a combination. Eighty people choosing four of them. Your odds of winning. Okay. I really like this next one. Lining up 75 people for a picture. Does order matter? Yeah, order matters. Order matters. Okay. Why does order matter? Let me pause for a second. Start the recording again. 75. Permutation of 75. If you did not do that on your calculator, do it now. I just put, can you also put 75 um, factorial? 75 factorial, it'll do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it says error. What it says, it says on, on mine, it says memory overflow. Yeah. This number's too big for your calculator to handle. This is what we call in the business really, really big. In the math teacher business. That's the number we call really, really big. So big your calculators won't have. Mine won't either. Mine won't either, and mine's got more room and memory than yours does, and mine can't handle it either. This is a huge number. Okay. And if you were to work this out, this is the same as 75 factorial. Yeah, your calculators will not handle a factorial that large. Um, we kind of did this one. Does order matter? No. 52, choosing six at a time. 203 million, 585,520 possibilities. That's a lot. That's a lot. 